Now back to 95.7 The Game. So we'll get back to the Warrior discussion and wither Draymond. I know a lot of fans have had it with Draymond. A lot of other fans say, no, 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 come on, you got to. You gotta, you gotta live with the the bad as well as live with the good when you got Draymond. But right now we turn our attention to we're talking baseball, spring training. We're getting ready for our exhibition games. And nice enough to join us with a, a, a look at the Giants here. He covers the Giants for SF Community Radio. Uh, find find him on Twitter. Follow him on Twitter. I should say at KXSF Sports uh, on Twitter. Sam Pasco joins us. How you doing today, Sam? I'm doing great. Thanks, guys, for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. We appreciate your insights. And let's cut to the chase, sir. What are the chances that the Giants make this season anywhere near as interesting from a competitive standpoint as last season was? I think it's a pretty good chance. They have an interesting lineup. The La Selva signing was a little questionable, especially since you have Donovan Solano coming off a silver slugger year. But I think with Posey coming back, Bart having a little bit more mentorship under him and some more you know, at-bats in the minor leagues and then maybe he comes back up. I think this could be a competitive pro- pro- product on the field, especially with that revamped starting rotation. I want to talk about Buster Posey a little bit. How much of a difference can he make uh, in this lineup? After a year off, he's another year older. His play seemed to be declining a little bit prior to him taking a year off. Can he have enough of an impact that it takes this offense to maybe a level that it couldn't quite reach last year? I think he'll definitely have an impact, probably not, you know, comeback player of the year level, but probably something close to it. He got the year of rest, which I think, you know, something you don't really can think of as a big deal, but I think for, especially being a catcher, I think that's probably going to help him. I mean, you look at like the NFL, Marshawn Lynch taking that one year off. You would come back and you come back a little stronger. So I think he's got something in him. And even if he's not producing on an everyday basis, maybe you have Trump in there or Bart comes up or Kurt Casale, who they signed from the Reds. Posey's going to you know, help the other guys out and provide a good morale boost. He's a fan favorite, and people want to see him. It's just a better energy overall with him in the clubhouse. So even if he's not at that you know, MVP level he can be at, or we saw earlier in his career, I think he's going to allow other guys to kind of reach their maximum potential just with him being there. Catching up with Sam Pasco, he covers the Giants for SF Community Radio. And by the way, Sam, you should know that Kyle, just so you know, when he asks you questions, Kyle's wearing an A's cap. Decked so when he asks you all this giant Ooh. stuff, just to, just to keep that just keep that in mind that he's actually wearing, and I a, think, an ace T-shirt. And yeah. a, a uh, Jesus right Lazaro T-shirt, yep. Yeah, yeah, so just keep that in mind, Sam. Um, as far as the Giants go, where do the Giants feel they're, they're strong, where do they, they feel they need shoring up the most here as they look up at, obviously, you know, very competitive, uh, very competitive teams in their division? I think right now it's that lineup against right-handed pitching. You know, I talked about Listella briefly, but, I mean, he did rank top five among qualified players in the American League last year in batting average and on base percentage against right-handed pitching. So, Kapler's excited about that depth. They have some great contact skill, and Listella slides right in there. I think you do worry about that rotation. You know, just I, I like the guys there, Alex Wood. You got Kevin Gosman back, but... It's definitely a question mark in terms of getting all the innings in because when those starters are only going four, five, maybe six, and you turn over that bullpen, I mean, we just saw it today. Last year's pretty much last year's closer, Trevor Gott, get DFA'd. So if that starting pitching is going to be a question mark, it's going to be a hard year. But if they can be solid, like Kevin Gosman turned out to be last year, I, I think it's a good group and, and they can be competitive. Are they going to look to add maybe one more name during the spring, or is it just going to be fifth starter by committee? Are they waiting for a, a player like Tyler Beatty to get back? What What do you foresee them doing in the back end of that rotation? Yeah, well, Beatty's not going to be back until May, and even then they talked about him maybe being more in a rehab guy just in the minor league level in May, so he's not going to be an immediate impact guy. They did sign uh, Yamaguchi from the uh, Blue Jays. Had a horrible year with them, but before that, he did throw a no-hitter over in Japan for not the San Francisco Giants, but the Yamori Giants uh, of the NPB. So I think they're going to stretch him out to be that starter. So they are a couple flyer guys like him in there. Aaron Sanchez is, is was the big guy today in the announced press conference. But I, I could see them getting one more guy. I mean, guys I looked at, maybe like a Rick Porcello. You know, he, he's, he's 32 years old, but... He made some good progress last year with the Mets, cutting down his home run rate from 2019 and improving his strikeout numbers. 
and maybe Jesse Chavez. I know, you know, an A's guy going back a little bit. He's you know California guy. Bring him back to the Bay. See what happens. I mean, he had his career, lowest career ERA not that long ago, back in 2018, between the Rangers and Cubs. So maybe Porcello or Chavez, but right now I think they have a pretty good mix of veterans they trust and a couple flyer guys that could compete for the back end. Look at Sam throwing a bone to the A's fan. That was cute. Yeah. Appreciate that, Sam. If Jesse oh, Chavez is Kapler. starting yeah. there in trouble. <laughs> hey, he can relieve, too. I want to ask you. Yeah. Sam, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask you about Gabe Kapler. Is is he still proving he's the right guy for this team? Is he still on some level proving that he's a legitimate major league manager, or is that a little too harsh? No, I think he definitely is. I mean, I, I questioned it, of course, but when you think about it, like he was coming into a very difficult situation after what Bruce Bochy did with this franchise, his legacy, being a Hall of Famer. Anyone stepping in there after him is going to be you know, scrutinized heavily. I think Kapler did a good job with that, with, with handling that. And now, now we're seeing the team kind of be in Farhan and, and Kapler's vision. Yes, you still have the veterans there, Posey, Bill Crawford, Longoria, but now we're starting to see some of the young guys we talked about more, Dubon, Bart, Luciano, these guys that are really part of the future of what Kapler is supposed, you know, supposed to bring going forward. So I, I think he's the right guy for it. They seem to be on the same page in terms of, player development, the medical staff. So I think he's got a good good energy to him that I think is going to really work out well going forward. Sam, why do you ask you about this at the top? And I want to I want you to kind of lay this out for me. Let's fast forward to October. The Giants are a wild card team. Can you lay out the path that gets them there? Yeah, I, I'd say I think it's the second one after... I mean, it's tough. It's tough when you look at that NL West and, and for them yeah. to get wins there, especially after what the Padres did. But maybe there's an injury and, you know, for, you know, you Darvish, someone in, in on the Padres staff and, and, the, and the Giants can get some victories there. But it, it would be very difficult considering the competition they have to handle within the National League West for them to really get those wins for that second wild card spot. So I guess then the Giants probably, I mean, truth be told, if they were contending, if they're on the fringe of the wild card race for most of the summer, then ultimately they'd probably be pretty satisfied with that, right, as long as the young players continue to develop. Yeah, you see some steps forward, and some of the guys, you know, Jake McGee maybe, you know, looks like he's a reliever. Uh, part of the future, he's on a three-year deal, so you hope he is. So I think they'd have to be satisfied that, hoping that Bart takes a step forward, hoping that Dubon can – play the outfield a little bit better and maybe a little better uh, uh, baseball IQ on the base pass. I know he uh, had a couple of doofus moves there last year, but I think if those guys take steps forward and they're competitive throughout like they were last year, I think that'll be a victory for this team in 2021. Who do you think winds up closing? Ooh, I, I think it's Tyler Rogers. I like him. Mm. I, I, he's quirky. He's got the submarine delivery. He struck out Mike Trout on an 85-mile-an-hour fastball <laughs> you know, down the middle last year. I think... I think he steps, takes a step forward. He's a married man now. Congratulations, Tyler, oh. you know. But I think I think he's going to close it out. And I think, you know, maybe he takes over like that Darren O'Day spot where he's, he becomes an elite, unusual sidearm submarine guy in that back of the, uh, back of the pen. Sam, one more for you before we let you go. And this may sound snarky, but I, I'm sincere here. How many years before the Giants are in position to offer anybody the type of deal the Padres just gave Fernando Tatis Jr.? Obviously, that's not, you know, they're not there now. And so we're we're forecasting when some of their top players come into the major leagues and are productive. But how how long before they're in position to do anything like that, in your estimation? You know, I think it's it's not as long as you think. You know, Kapler talked about Marco Luciano and Will Wilson showing up to camp in great shape this year. Wilson looking lighter but still sturdy, and Luciano being stronger and that being reflected off just the pop of the bat. I think those two guys up the middle for 2022, 2023. And then you extend them out six, seven, eight, nine years. I think that could be the double play duo going forward. Kind of taking over, you know, I'm not saying Brandon Crawford, Joe Panic level, but I think those guys have a lot of potential and will be extended long term, two, three years. Mm-hmm. Sam Pasco covers the Giants for SF Community Radio. Follow him on Twitter at KXSF Sports. Sam, thank you very much for your time, especially on a weekend. We appreciate it. Uh, we learned a lot. Hopefully, we'll talk to you again soon, sir. Thanks, Sam. Of course. Thanks, guys. All right.
Take care.